welcome back to Marriage and Real Life on this Tuesday evening or whatever night you may be watching. With Luke and Rachel Mosier. We're so thankful that you've joined us and uh, we hope that these videos have been encouraging to you and feel free to always send us a message or a comment below. Tonight we have another game for you in Couples Corner and we're going to test your memory. So you got to go back to the beginning of your relationship. A few years ago. And remember something. So let's see how you do. I'm going to do better than her and tell you right now. Maybe. Okay, so how did you do? Pretty good. I did better. Yeah, I think you did. You remembered one thing that I didn't remember. <laughs> well, let us know how you did, and we'll try to keep these games coming. Mm -hmm. We'll see how we They're do. They're fun. Tonight, we are going to talk about It's a Wonderful Life. Yes, it is. And, of course, that's from one of my favorite Christmas movies with uh, Jimmy Stewart. And his character's name is George Bailey, and I li we like to quote lines from movies. Oh, yeah. And one of my favorite lines to quote from that movie is, George Bailey, is this the ear you can't hear out of? And then she says, George Bailey, I love you to the day I die. And then there's a couple other quotes that we like, and songs that we like. Mm -hmm. But I've been thinking about this title, It's a Wonderful Life, and how I think a lot of times... We're living our lives, and it is a wonderful life that the Lord's blessed us with, a wonderful marriage, a wonderful family, but yet we, we may not be living it that way. We may not actually be enjoying the moments. We might not actually be enjoying the journey that God is taking us on in our marriage with our family and in life. And so we're going to focus on that tonight, how we can better enjoy the journey that the Lord has us on in our marriage. One of the reasons why we may have a hard time focusing on enjoying the journey is because we get so busy with what's going on in our lives that we stop, you know, to smell the roses and really enjoy what we're blessed with and what we're surrounded with and we get just busy. And so I was thinking about the word contentment and Luke's going to read Philippians 4.11 for us. It says, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. And contentment means in a state of peaceful happiness. And so as we're thinking about enjoying this life that God's given us, learning how to be content with what we've got, where we're at, and what's going on. And you hear the phrase, the grass is greener on the other side. Well, I've heard it said, then you need to start watering your lawn. <laughs> because if you go over to the other side, guess what? You took yourself over there, so <laughs> you've contaminated the grass. <laughs> but just being content with um, knowing that the Lord has you right where you are in your marriage, in your life, for a reason. 
And sometimes I think our human nature is to jump ahead. We want we want what's down the road in five years or in 10 years, but really enjoying the moment that we have right now to be together and to live. Sometimes we might spend too much time playing the comparison game. And it's really easy to do that in the world that we live in with social media. And we see maybe what somebody else got as a gift or where they're living or how they upgraded something. And so we're naturally comparing ourse ourselves to them and, and where we're at. And comparison can be dangerous because it's not really reality. Um, usually we filter what we put out there. So we're only seeing maybe the best version of someone and what's going on in their life. And we, we don't really know what else is happening. And so it's dangerous because our marriage can't compete with that. Our, our spouse can't compete with that because that's not reality. That's not our reality. That's just what we see out there. In Hebrews 12, it says, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And, you know, I look at that in this way. I'm not a track coach by no means, but uh, I've been around it a lot. And, you know, when you run a race, you want to stay in your lane. You know, and I know different races are different, but in this analogy, um, if you get out of your lane, you could fall and or it could take you out of the path that you want to be in. And so uh, that race that, you know, that that we're running with perseverance is we got to stay in our lane because once you jump out of that lane, that's not necessarily the race you want to be in. That's not the way you want to do it to fulfill the ending of the race. Of course, when I'm talking about this is, is your marriage, is uh, you know, uh, your relationship with your spouse. Yeah, and when you do that comparison or when you're looking back in the race at somebody else or looking forward or to the side, that could cause you to stumble and fall. And also, it, it, I think it changes your view of the value of that God has put on you and put on your marriage. And that comparison changes that value and that self-worth. And you want to, to be confident in that God brought you together, that he's working through you, that he wants to use you, he has a plan for you and your marriage. Nobody else can do what your marriage can do for the kingdom of God. And so stay on the race, focus, go forward. Sometimes we need to take a break, a breather. Sometimes we need to replenish and have a rest but stay on the race that God has marked out for you and your marriage. Now we've been talking about, you know, being content, you know, and where you're at and not looking at the other side, you know, the grass is greener and things like that. But even with, with being content with, with where you're at and, where you're, and what you have, that still doesn't mean that you need to be complacent in that. And I feel that you still need to grow together and mature together. And, um, you know, like she said, water that grass, you know, because... <laughs> It's got to grow somehow, you know. So uh, even though being content, that doesn't mean that you've got to be complacent in that being content with it. You know, you need to um, enjoy where you're at, but also in the same breath, enjoy the growth that you can have together and, uh, and move forward with that. Yeah. And we all know there's different seasons in our marriage, you know, um, before kids. We call that BK or after kids. And... Um, obviously the grass is going to change, the weather around us is going to change, but it's what we do to keep the marriage thriving and going. You know, we've been married 17 years now, and I hope that there are some areas that we're stronger and better, and I, I feel like our communication is better, or at least, you know, what we may be having discussions on might be the same thing, but how we're discussing it is different. And hopefully we're getting better at that. So just continuing to grow. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And so this is the life that God's given us. And I believe that he really wants us to invest in it. And he wants us to live it to the full on this earth for him. And point others to him. And that's really what our marriages are is about it's to point others to Christ how can we enjoy the journey this wonderful life I think one simple way is just to laugh together have have moments where sometimes you know it's so crazy that you just have to laugh about it and what's going on Proverbs 17 22 says cheerful heart is good medicine 
And I believe that's the case for your marriage. Sometimes you need to smile, just laugh about it, talk about it, and not be so serious. And just have a good time. And, and that hopefully will relieve some of the stress maybe that you're feeling in that situation. How else can we enjoy this journey that we're on? Well, I mean, you can live in the present. You, know, you can do things like making a list of you know, the things that God's blessed you with in your, in your family. I mean, it could be in your relationship. It could be with your kids. Uh, you can also uh, make a list of, of things about your spouse, about mm -hmm. your kids that you enjoy. Um, and, you know, and those things that you can look back on after you've made those things. And, and first, you're accounting them and you're saying this is what's good about us. But another thing, you can also be reminded um, if something's not going well, you can look at that list and be reminded, well, you know, this is what is a good thing in my marriage. This is a good thing in my in my life right now. And because uh, I know that you know, I, I struggle with that at times with feeling down or stressed or things like that and not necessarily thinking on the positives. Uh, so living in the present and making the list and those kind of things really would help in, uh, you know, in fulfilling that. I typically tend to be the half empty part. I look at a cup half empty and Luke looks at it half full. And so that's a good area way that we complement each other. But if I can write down all the ways that the Lord's blessed me this year or uh, just all of a sudden you begin to focus on the blessings and the, the positive things and you don't focus so much on the negative things or what you're worried about or the things you fear about or how is this going to happen or, you know, Lord, how is this going to work out? And, and you're focusing on the positive things. And when you put your focus on the Lord and those positive things, those other things just kind of fade away. And I think that's how it is in our marriage, in our, in our relationship, our walk with the Lord, our walk together in our marriage is focusing on the Lord and focusing on those things. And that will help you even more enjoying the wonderful life that he's given us. At the end of It's a Wonderful Life, George Bailey does get his wish. He does get to live again. He says, I want to live again. I want to live again. And he gets the wish and, you know, he's running through Bedford Falls. I love you, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he gets home and kisses his wife and kids. And he's just so thankful. Even though he knows he's going to jail, he knows all these things are happening. He's just so thankful and blessed because he has his life back. And I think if we could maybe look at our own lives and our marriage from that outward viewpoint of, you know, where, what would our lives be like if we weren't with the Lord, if we weren't together, if we didn't have this blessed life that he's given us, if we didn't have all these things. And that, I think that's why it's important to make that thankful list because that really makes you think about those things. But take a step back and be like, oh, you know, it's, sometimes we, we really think it is bad, you know, the, the weight of the world is on our shoulders. But if we can look back and just be like, you know what? It's not that bad. God's got it in control. He's got us. We're going to love each other. We're going to love God. And we're going to love others. And our marriage is going to stay strong. And and just like George Bailey and that, just that joy, that pure joy he had running after he got to live again. You know, I think that's that's how we can maybe enjoy our wonderful life that we have together. So as we enter into a time of prayer Wherever you're at in your life, in your marriage, whatever you may be facing, nothing is too difficult for the Lord. And we always, of course, encourage you to seek wisdom and guidance from uh, pastors or counsel, however you may need to. But just be thinking, you know, the Lord has something in mind for your marriage. He has something in store for your marriage. And so let's just ask the Lord what he wants to do and, and let him do it. And let's be used of him tonight. Dear Lord, thank you for this message that you've given us tonight, and we just uh, pray to you that that you know just show us that wonderful life that we you know we see that, and we may look at others, but we just don't want to sit there and think that there's something better than what we already have, Lord. And just uh, show us that we are in that wonderful life, Lord, and that our our marriages are true, they're special to us, and. Help us see those ways that we can be thankful for what we have and grow together and, uh, and trust each other, Lord. Just thank you for the, the spouses. Thank you for the relationships that you give us. Uh, just help us grow out through this week and, you know, love each other. In your name, amen. Amen.
Thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week. We love you guys. Have a great week. See ya.